All right, folks, and let's take a look at the tier 10 in game for the Italian tank destroyers, the Contra Caro Minotauro. That's a tongue twister and a half, but it looks fairly modern for a tank destroyer design. It is practically a heavy tank disguised as a TD, but it has a four man crew in the turret. So, as you can see, the hull front. It's pretty small without periscopes, so there are no weak spots for the hull front. And what that means is, the driver is also in the turret basket with the commander, the gunner, and the loader. So that should be the driver, that should be the gunner, if he's right-handed, that should be the commander, and that should be the loader. But everybody is in the turret basket, which means the hull is a lot smaller than conventional normal tanks so large turret and small hull front kind of makes the vehicle look front heavy so what that means is you don't have to expose too much of your hull front or lower plate to go cresting over a hill so pretty good for hull down positions but you can also see that the commander cupola and the gunner and driver cupolas are somewhat elevated like a ST1 of a design so STI ST1 the heavy tank so it's kind of an elevated ridge it is still rounded but if it's also like 300 millimeters then you will not be penetrating these two so yeah the commander cupola will likely be the weak spot so small target like the object 268 version number four and hard to hit but if it's also 300 millimeters for there, uh, this thing is practically immune at the front to most gold shells, so that's good. Something to counter, <laughs> to counter the chieftains <laughs> in the game. That would be hilarious, but yeah, that should be a weak spot on top. So we need the actual armor model to see. So for now, if it's all 300, then this is this thing is pretty good. <laughs> Immune to most gold shell other than the Yak Panzer E100's 420 high explosive anti tank round. Other than that, you're good to go. <laughs> but it looks very modern of a tank it's not a it's not a tank destroyer, it's a heavy tank. It's wrongfully classified, even though it's a pseudo turret. So 45 degrees to each side. It is 90 total, but I think about the same as the FE4005, not as good as something like the T28 prototype or the T110E4, but still better than something like the Tortoise or the Badger or the E3s for that matter, but it is a heavy tank. It is not a tank destroyer. It only has 255mm of pin with AP round. That is heavy tanks. Usually tank destroyer at tier 10 have about 290 to about 300 so yeah it's a heavy tank but 530 alpha for the 130 millimeter gun all right it's like a yak panzer e100 not as damaging i think it was 540 for the 128 on the germans but yeah it's okay 345 millimeters of pen for the high exposed anti-tank round so the gold shell is fairly effective and the high explosive is 130 millimeters of pen with 700 alpha. The high explosive is not bad. It will go through most light tanks, actually all the light tanks, other than the upper plate of the Sheridan, even though that's space armor, so some of the light tanks. But this will go through the Leopard 1. Hmm, maybe the hull of the Projecto? or lower plate of the projecto, the TVP T5051s, so not a bad high explosive, but you carry 5 rounds in the autoloader, each shell takes 8 seconds between each shot, so it's like an autoloader, but not, so it's like an auto reloader, but not, so kind of a weird design, all the Italian tanks have a weird gimmick, this one's special, so it's like an autoloader, but not really. Only takes 24 seconds to load 5 rounds, but each shell does 
take a while. So even though you have five rounds, you don't have that big of a burst in terms of、uh, intershell reload clip. So imagine that for four rounds you have, or for five rounds, five rounds with eight second reload between each one. That means math is hard. <laughs> I mean, if it's eight second reload with 500 alpha, that is pretty scary. <laughs> that is more than 5,000 dpm per minute. That is, ay ay ay. That is about 5,000 dpm. Holy crap! <laughs> But then again, you only have five rounds, so you only deal. Still, that's a lot of damage. 2,650 or so. That's still a lot of burst in terms of DPM, but it still takes eight seconds. It's a weird gimmick. Accuracy is 0.44 without a 100% crew. It's 0.42 with a 100% crew, but kind of garbage, I guess. <laughs> It's fast to aim for a 130 millimeter, 2.3 seconds, 10 degrees of gun depression. Make use of your hold down positions and 20 elevation. Great. 90 degrees traverse angle, 45 to each side, 50 rounds, not bad. Commander, gunner, driver, loader, similar to the Vipera. So train all your crews. Top speed of 36, reverse of 12. Heavy tank of all the allies like the M103s or the T110E5, the Conqueror, all have about the same top speed. Horsepower per ton ratio is somewhat low. About 12.2, so slightly struggle to rev up, similar to a T28 prototype. Hmm, uh, it's all right considering the armor. You need some drawbacks. Hull traverse 24 degrees. Tur traverse is slow, only 18. Eh, yeah, and use the armor while traversing, or traverse both the turret and the hull to. Practically move faster, but total hit points: twenty one hundred, like a badger. Three hundred millimeter for the turret front, three hundred for the hull front. Thick side armor, seventy five. Garbage side of the turret, seventy five. Garbage rear, garbage. View range three ninety. Good actually for a tank destroyer. Usually they have about three hundred eighty. Radio standard. So. It is classified as a pentagon-shaped tank destroyer, so that's the assault gun type of tank destroyers in the game. So as you can see, assault gun with the pentagram of the tank destroyer logo. But usually for field modifications, you will want this one, reinforced suspension. So the plus. 15% to terrain resistance helps a lot, so you have a lot better effective、uh, top speed and hull traverse. So this is a lot better. You should use that for your Minotauro. But with that accuracy and aim time, I would suggest you boost、uh, the accuracy a little bit by clipping the、uh, the aim time a little bit. So use this one, the parallax. Yeah. Better aim time or better accuracy at the cost of aim time. You should obviously use that. As for, yeah, no concealment. Just give me more view range. You you have garbage concealment after you shoot. So yeah, you have two point three two at uh concealment after you shoot. So might as well boost your view range while you're at it, right? Uh, this one should go with. You should go with、uh, survivability for your second equipment slot. As for the number、uh, seven field modification, you should get protection to accrue from injuries. No, <laughs> give me more DPM. So increase、uh, the DPM by reducing the reload time. Obviously, this will cut down your vehicle hit points by two percent. So two percent of 2100 is about 50 or so. Not that much. <laughs> It's not much. For 50 hit points, you get better DPM as well as protection from injuries. But still, 
if you play this vehicle well, you should not be pinned with that armor. So give me more DPM, obviously. And for the final one, uh, more engine power at the cost of reverse speed. To the top reverse speed by minus two, you get 2% more engine power. So I would rather have more engine power. It's a small detail, but yeah, you can counterbalance the cut to the reverse speed with a turbocharger. So, what the hell would I put on this thing? It's an autoloader, so you cannot put rammer on this thing, but I will put probably enhanced gunner sights to shrink down the aim circle a little bit, increase the accuracy. Uh, vents for the survivability slot, so it's a closed top vehicle, you should put vents. And for the final one, I would probably put turbocharger. You can also put optics, but turbocharger will help out with the somewhat lacking of a mobility. So put turbocharger, you can go peekaboo with the gun depression, and you'll be a lot better at escaping. So yeah, turbocharger is somewhat better. Have your teammates spot for you rather than you spotting for your teammates, but this thing has a lot of armor. So you can also put toolbox, but that's kind of an overkill. Don't put toolbox, <laughs> just have repair skill for your crew. But how the hell would I rate this thing as a uh, tier 10? Why does it only have 40 rounds on the in-game screenshot compared to the 50? What the hell? <laughs> I mean, not that big of a deal, but still, I would rather have 50 rounds than 40. You have a few more options of carrying the high explosive with that good of a penetration. Also, the show velocity is pretty quick for AP round. Also for the high explosive and the tank round. It's pretty good. 1300 or so. Not like the garbage <laughs> Chinese tank destroyers with garbage show velocities. Those are utter crap. So Chinese tank destroyers have about 700 or so shell velocity speed or something. God, it, it sucks. Yeah, 760. Yeah, these are terrible. <laughs> it lobs the shell across the map. It's not as bad as something like the Caliban, but still. That shell velocity is pretty good. The only downside is Commander Cupola or the mobility, but... Auto loader, it's not auto reloader, not a enhanced auto reloader like with the Italian heavy or just a regular one with the medium tanks. Huh. I don't find anything bad with it if it's a assault gun tank destroyer. I mean, you have gun depression, you have mobility, somewhat, compared to a slow E3. You have the capability of turning the turret around 45 degrees to each side. So more versatile than something of a Badger design or E3 design. The only downside is the penetration. But then again, the Badger has two four, uh, 270 millimeters of pen or so. Uh, Badger. Let's see. Assault gun tank destroyers. The pentagram. Badger has 270 millimeters of pen, so obviously cannot compare with the accuracy of the Badger, but this thing is a DPM machine. So, I mean, average damage is 480? Holy crap, I never noticed that. I thought it was 440 or something, but it's a 123 millimeter, right? Yeah, it's a 123. It's a weird number, but... Okay, I mean, it's somewhat like this gun, but you do not have the DPM burst constantly as the Badger. You do have more workable armor because the lower plate is somewhat huge on the Badger. So even though the upper plate is pretty strong, you get pinned in the lower plate, you're dead. If it's all 300 millimeters all the way around, even for the cupola, this vehicle might be a counter 
to something of a chieftain. That's how good it is. So how much would I rate this thing? I need to see the armor, but for now, I think it's like an 8. 8.5 even. If it's even faster, I'll give it like a 9. So, 300mm at the front is no joke. <laughs> I mean, everybody thought the Emil is toxic just because of the gun depression. The Emil, or the Kronwagen, has no hull armor. But that doesn't matter. So this thing has effectively super thick turret front. So, if this thing is considered toxic in like rank matches, then what the hell will you classify the Minotauro as? So, you have no way of penetrating the turret front of the Kronwagen without hitting the cupola on top. It's a small target. It's a very small target. It can also hide it by gun depressing, but or gun elevating, one of the which, but still. The hull front sucks on the mill. The hull front on the Minotauro doesn't suck. The only downside is this thing has 12 degrees of gun depression, whereas you only get 10, but it only has 10 elevation. This is terrible. <laughs> it has 20 for the elevation on the Minotauro. So if you elevate the gun, you can actually hit stuff with the Minotauro. But it all depends on the cupola size and the thickness. If the cupola is 300 millimeters, if that thing is 300 millimeters base, this is a counter to the chieftain. So chieftain cannot penetrate this vehicle whatsoever. While you dump high explosive anti-tank rounds into their front, you'll automatically pin. And your high explosive does more damage compared to their high explosive. This might be a counter to the chieftain. <laughs> it is. For now, I think it's pretty good, so I'll give it an 8, maybe 8.25 with all the stats, mostly because of the armor. The, the accuracy could be buffed out with the gunner sights and stuff, with the field modifications and stuff, but aim time is fast. Mobility could be better, but you'll put a turbocharger to help with the top speed and the horsepower per ratio, so... I don't see anything bad with it. <laughs> Not really. It's a more effective E3 if it's all 300 millimeters. The, th the E3 has a weird time moving the gun about and hiding the lower plate. This doesn't need to care about the lower plate. Okay, pretty good. Well, there you go, folks. The Contra Caro Minotauro with a lot of thick ass armor. So it's like the Vipera, but. Obviously, it's at tier 10, so a lot better in terms of bouncing shells, but guess we'll have to wait for like 1.8 or 1.18 or 1.19 test server to try it out, but to see the actual collision model and how thick the actual armor is. But I am presuming this is going to be the weak spot, so for now, 8 out of 10. It's pretty good. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.